certain issues for the sake of upcoming generations. Otherwise, when evil is allowed to persist, it will become viewed as good. The culture of respect is a well-rooted scriptural Bible culture. In Acts chapter 23 and in verse 5, when Paul the Apostle spoke in a careless way regarding the high priest Ananias and his attention was drawn, he immediately withdrew his words and apologized. The culture of respect is also a deeply rooted African culture. So strong that in parts of, the, of this country, in the West, children prostrate men to greet fathers and elders. Yesterday, a man drew my attention from America regarding a video that was mimicking God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo, posted by the mad dog called Freeze. Mad dog emphasized. Somebody said, Pastor, why do you call a person a dog? Jesus did that first. He called Herod a wild dog, a fox. I said mad dog because that is spot diagnosis. When you are medical or you study medicine, there's something we call spot diagnosis. Where you know a sickness by just looking at the patient without even asking. That is mad behavior. That is schizophrenia, schizophreniform illness. That is mania. That is bipolar disorder. That is attention seeking psychopathic disorder. A man looking for attention by all means and doing that by pulling down people who build value over the years. Someone said something and he, 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 he said that they called him a bastard. I believe that that title is not less than what it is. Because if that is not the title to be called, when last did you behave like somebody who grew in a home? When last did you behave like somebody whose father gave him any morals, any value? When last did you behave like somebody who knows culture? What did your father teach you growing up? What did you learn as a child? And here you are, wifeless, houseless, jobless, can't keep a wife, can't keep a job, can't keep nothing. And you are commenting about someone who's, who is speaking concerning marriage that has been married successfully for 40, close to 40 solid years. When last did the tailor advise a surgeon how to operate? When last did the carpenter tell a senior advocate of Nigeria how to stand in a court to defend the case? What do you know about marriage? Who can't keep a home? What do you know about life and success and destiny? Who is a baggage of moral bankruptcy? A baggage of emptiness of character? Talking about people who you are never up to and will never be up to if they gave you a thousand lifetimes. If you are in the same class of architecture with Bishop David Oedipo, ask yourself where will your position be? That is if you are able to study such a course. Or if you are in a mathematics class with Pastor e. e. Adeboye, ask yourself, where will you be found in a mathematics class where he, he, he did the first degree in mathematics and then applied mathematics in masters? Where will you be? Or in his PhD in hydrodynamics with the Stokes equation specialty. Have you heard of that before? Or where would you be in our anatomy class? In pharmacology, pharmacodynamics, pharmacokinetics. What do you know about ethiopathogenesis of diseases? Have you ever heard of such before? What would be your rating in such classes? These are people who would have defeated you from the scratch if you were their age mate. And they will defeat you till tomorrow. Ask yourself this question. How many lifetimes will you need 
to be able to employ 35,000 people in your organization. That is what Bishop Uyedipo has done successfully and beyond that. How many lifetimes will you need to be able to run two universities, world class? Covenant University is to among top 500 universities in the world. It's number four in Africa and number one in Nigeria. What value have you added? What do you have to offer? Other than to stay on the pulpit and speak of what you know nothing about. I advise you, you are already a cost man. Already. A cost man by virtue of bankruptcy of everything around you. But you better repent now. Otherwise, Jehovah, whom you have stood against, will finish deal with you and deal with your lineage. Let me give you a final counsel. Before you talk about married people and talk about people in ministry, go ahead, get yourself a wife, get yourself a family, succeed in the marriage, then you have any audacity, temerity, or any effrontery to speak further on marriage or on any issue border on life success. Otherwise, you are a, a colossal, monumental, generational waste of existence. Second advice, since you are so interested in pastoring, and in pastors, get yourself a church started from the scratch. Gather a hundred people physically and then gather them up to a thousand. And then gather them up to ten thousand. And then when you are true with that, pray for their sick. Deliver their oppressed. Help their, their, their widows and orphans. And then run it successfully. Then you have an advice to give to anybody who is in ministry. Otherwise, close your mouth. Close your mouth close your irresponsible mouth forever and never to be heard and for everyone who follow gullibly irresponsible personalities such as these valueless entities worthless entities adding nothing to society offering nothing just don't waste your life go face your front and do what you need to do to make a mark in your generation what you attack you can't attract what you hate you can't have what you like you like you don't like you must lack don't waste your life following a vehicle going nowhere don't waste your life listening to a man who is speaking on something he has no experience about don't waste your life a caution to you the curse of the lord when the young men spoke against Elijah, Elisha, and said, bad headed man of God, bad headed man of God, the, 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 the curse of the Lord overran them. The same curse is on you as you hear this. The same curse. Except you retrace your step and make amends. 